Well, the Jays put up little to no fight against the New York Yankees today as they get swept and lose 10-2. And guys, we were coming into this series, like we said, right off the top, more or less looking forward to this series because you had Stroman, possibly one of your young, young-ish starters of the future. You had Sean Reed Foley, 22-year-old, your top 10 prospect. Ryan Baraki, who's been very, very good for this team, looks to continue his great season so far. The first two had not gone so well. Ryan Baraki's, though, was even worse. He goes two-thirds of an inning, gives up four hits, six runs, and walks two guys and can't get out of the inning he throws 44 pitches in those two-thirds of an inning, and he's gone from the game. Guys, remember that ERA in the low twos? We're like, wow, this guy is having a great type of season. All it takes is a couple bad starts when you haven't thrown a lot of innings. 4.27 for Ryan Barucki after this ball game. Now, again, he's young. He will learn. I'm not worried about what he you know, what he will bring for the future. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's positive from Ryan Barucki. But, again, he's got to learn, and it's going to take some times where he gets hit around. Um... You know, and obviously Randall Grichik starts off the ball game with a home run for the Blue Jays. 3-0 ding-dong to left, I think it was left center. Uh, he hit a 426 feet. He, cr he crushed it. His 17th home run of the season. He ends up going 2-4 two for, two in, two for four in the ball game, raising his average to 227. There you go. Good day for uh, Randall Grichik. But then the sixth spot and you're down 6-1. Now, let's go to the top of the sixth inning real, uh, real quick, guys. And i, I got to talk about something here, and it's kind of frustrating. Ken Reese Morales leads off that inning with a dinger to left field on a 2-1 count. Great job by K Money. He's been really, he only has 14 home runs in the year, and he hits it. He crushes it deep and gone. Great job. Next up, uh, what happened here? Top six. Uh, I'm going to have that in front of me here. Kevin Pillar doubles to left field, and we're all like, all right, you know, maybe... We can get some something going here. Obviously, Jay Hat, former Blue Jay, on the mound uh, for the uh, for the uh, New York Yankees. I don't know why I was saying Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, New York Yankees. Then Hernandez strikes out, and they bring in Holder, who gets Danny Jansen to line up to Brett Gardner. Now there's two away. Then Kevin Pillar decides to steal third. And in that fact, he gets thrown out. My question is, why in the heck are you trying to steal third with two out and you're down by four runs? If you get the third, a sack fly is not going to do it because there's two away. Are you going to tie the ball game? No, you're just going to make it a 6-3 game if you make it to third. A single will score you. Yeah, well, a single at second base will score a guy like Kevin Pillar. Bonehead move. Whether it's being selfish and trying to get a stolen base under his belt or what. But that is a stupid move. I, I, I hear, I think Billy McKinney did that in, in one of the earlier games. But then Kevin Pillar goes to the dugout and Gibby gear, gives him an earful. And you know what? Good on him. Good. As much as John Gibbons will probably not be the Blue Jays manager... Next season, we've heard that it's pretty much going to be, he will be the manager to end the season. But next year, he probably won't be the guy, but he is still putting in his effort. And he wants his players to still put in a solid effort. And not being stupid and trying to steal a base with two outs when you don't need to. There's no need for it. You know? It's just so frustrating you know, seeing, I, I, yeah, Aledmus Diaz was up next. Well, just not too long ago, this guy was one of the hottest Blue Jays out there. Let him rip a single and you'll probably score on it anyways. There's no need to steal with two out and you're down four. Especially when you're trying to steal third. It's a joke. There's no need for it. I never chirp Kevin Pillar. But I don't know why he was doing that. To get to third? What's the difference? There's nothing. It's a bonehead move by Kevin Pillar. That's just my opinion on that. And that puts the Jays... Oh, they had a little bit of a rally going. Well, they tried to at least. 
And they had a guy at second with two away. Hey, and all it needs is a clutch base knock. But instead, Kevin Pillar tries to take it into his own hands and steal third, which is really not going to get you Aaron anywhere anyways, and he gets thrown out in the process. It's the way it goes. Jay's offense can't get anything going the rest of the way, and Tim Mays gets absolutely torched up in his two-thirds of an inning. Four hits, four runs, walks two. Terrible. So... We always thought these, le We honestly, right out of spring training, I thought Tim Mays could be a lefty. I really rely on this year because Aaron Loop we could never we could, we could never trust. Maybe not so much anymore, guys. I mean, I, I've seen, I think I've seen enough of Tim Mays to really know what I, ha what I see in him. Um, so, yeah, the Jays uh, lose, what, 10-2. There's the final. Jay Happ gets the win against his former ball club. Uh, he goes five and a third, seven hits, two runs, strikes out eight guys. Good job, good Jay Happ. Good job, buddy. You, you did a good job. But come back for the Blue Jays next year because <laughs> we need you. And I think he likes it here. So, uh, you know how crazy this lineup is when you're seeing Russell Martin at the start of the, start of the lineup. Uh, he goes one for four with a couple Ks. Gritchick, like I said, goes two for four uh, in the ball game. You know, uh, Morales was two for four. Pilar was two for four. Uh, Hernandez 0 for four with a couple strikeouts. This guy has to learn in the offseason hard how to... Not strike out as much as he has. It's 132 Ks so far for uh, Teoscar Hernandez at a ridiculous number right now. Um, Danny Jansen goes one for three, obviously with the line out as well. He's making some solid contact. Uh, his average drops to 412. It drops to 412. That's pretty crazy. Diaz 0 for three. And Billy McKinney goes one for four, but also strikes out one, dropping his average to 333. But you know what? That's okay because he gets a hit at the bottom of the lineup. That's all you ask for. Uh after Ryan Brocky's terrible outing, Joe Biagini comes out. And we'd have no idea from one outing to the next what Big Joe is going to give us. I mean, he could get absolutely torched in an inning, and that's it for him. But today he goes three and a third, gives up two hits, one walk, no runs, and strikes out two. To kind of keep the, to the Jays in the ball game, at the very least, didn't let it get out of hand that early. Then, uh... The Jays, well, obviously with some moves being made yesterday, Stroman being, well, obviously with Stroman being put on the DL and Luis Santos um, being sent down and Aaron Sanchez being moved to the 60-day DL for right now. We know he's on his rehab assignments, but he'll still be a little bit before he comes back up. They bring up Justin Schaefer. Uh, guys, the name, if it sounds familiar to you guys, it's a Jays' eighth round pick from 2014. The 25-year-old right-handed guy, bullpen uh had an era of one something there in triple a buffalo i know uh, i think your name is fox 87 bud uh you i've probably seen justin schaefer a lot this year i look from what i've seen i like what i got he's got a nice looking curveball again he gave up a hit and walked the batter but he struck out a guy and went a clean inning in his first big league inning good job buddy and hey you never know with this jays bullpen you could be in the bullpen next season we're just gonna have to wait and see but about that we already talked about tim mays abysmal outing now speaking of future bullpen guys the one lefty that i'm looking at is like our lord and savior for right now thomas panone goes an inning and a third no hits no walks gets a strikeout dropping his era to 4.15 from six coming into the game so he is getting back to normal there. And Tyler Clifford, guys, throws out a clean inning of one hit ball. Uh, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts, none of that, but gives up one hit. And guys, as much as we chirp Tyler Clifford for a lot of the games that he has blown, he has not given up a run since the beginning of August against the Seattle Mariners. When that, when that happened, his ERA went to 401. And as of right now, it's what, 3.61? 3.63. Guys, if we're talking about trade bait at the end of, at the August 31st deadline, I think him and Curtis Granderson, who are actually both playing pretty well lately, those are guys you look at to move. All right, so you know what, guys? Next up, the Jays. Good news, Jays fans. The Baltimore Orioles are coming to the Rogers Center tomorrow. Andrew Kastner on the mound versus Marco Estrada in Game 1. Dylan Bundy versus Sam Gavilio Game 2. And... Uh, uh, David Hess, and it has here Thomas Pannone for Game 3. Now, he pitched an inning and a third today, so I'm not sure if that's going to change anything. But that's what I see right now is the three-game matchup. Could change, but that's what I see, all right? So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys just hated the last three games against the New York Yankees. Hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below. 
What'd you think of the game? What'd you think of Ryan Brucky guys in his limited time? What did, would you, what have your early impressions on Thomas Pannone have been? What are your Justin Schaefer in his inning of work? I'm going to hear what you guys have to say about all the young guys coming up. Look, the starters, they're playing against great teams. It's going to hurt. They're going to have tough outings, but it's how they rebound. Barucki's had a tough few outings. He'll find a way to bounce back. All right. So we'll talk to you guys. Um, what is that? Not this Wednesday. Next Wednesday, podcast edition. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes, guys. Twitter is down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys. Uh, it'll be tomorrow night. Ooh, hey, now, what was that? Tomorrow night. There we go. As the Blue Jays welcome in the Baltimore Orioles to Rogers Center. The reason I'm happy is because Baltimore is coming to town and the Jays actually have a chance to win a couple games here. Marco Estrada versus Andrew Kashner in Game 1, 7 first pitch at Rogers Center tomorrow night. We'll talk to you guys then.